Tech Junkies, what's going on fellas? We'll appreciate you guys clicking on the video. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, definitely subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. The way you guys are notified every time I release a new video. Before we get this one rolling guys, we need to get some heat in this garage. All right, new fishing rod here. This will be the main topic of today's video. Check this out, guys. Mr. Heater, 75,000 BTU. <laughs> is, that how, is that how Tim Allen did it from Home Improvement? You guys know what I'm talking about. 75,000 BTU heats up to 1,875 square feet, operates up to 11 hours on a full six gallon tank advanced cold weather start thermostat suitable for outdoor use guys let's go get some kerosene and this thing is nice guys i'm sure you guys can't tell we got home just in time looks like the rain is turning to snow so let's get this bad boy fired up this thing's like heavy duty. Alright. Wow. That is nice, man. That is nice. Alright, it was tested for multiple fuels, kerosene, which is what we're going to use. JP8 Jet A fuel, one and two diesel fuel, one and two fuel oil. So we're going to go with kerosene. We're just going to fill it up. Hold six gallons, I believe. I got five gallons here, so. All right, five gallons. Let's clean up what's all over the floor. <laughs> and tell you what, I started filling it with these nozzles. Man, I know it's some type of like safety nozzle, but it is a pain in the butt to use and try and hold down. I do believe you're supposed to like jam that into the hole there, but it's more of a hassle than what it's worth, I believe. So I just took it off, poured it directly in the funnel. Now I'll clean up the mess on the floor. All right, we're all fueled up. We're going to plug it in. I'm using a 25 foot, this is a 12 gauge cord. It does come with a cord wrap. I'm not going to install that right now. That would be pretty handy if you're going to use this like on a job site or something like that. I'm just gonna use it for the garage. I use this cord for many different things in here. So we're just going to leave it draped out on the floor. Again, no need to, like I said, put these on right now. So of course it is off, fueled up plugged in okay fill fuel tank with kerosene which we did turn thermostat at the lowest setting which it is plug heater into grounded outlet which we did okay turn thermostat at the highest setting okay we did turn power switch to on <laughs> Adjust thermostat to desired setting. Yeah, 77. It's going to warm up pretty fast in here. All right. Give it a couple of minutes, we'll hop into the video. Guys, five minutes, the garage is nice and toasty. We are ready to shoot some video. Just a quick heads up, this video is not sponsored by Mr. Heater. You know, the older you get, the cooler, you know, heaters and things like that become. So again, not a sponsored video, just a very nice heater that I wanted to share with you guys. I will link them down below if you guys want to check them out. But let's go ahead and hop into today's video. We're going to talk about 
the most versatile rod for bass fishing. Okay, I got a brand new one here that I picked up from Carl's, again, which I will link down below. Guys, if you have not checked out Carl's, definitely check them out. Again, it's a free 30-day trial to sign up for that membership, free 30-day trial. Sign up, no cost, save a few bucks. If you like it, you can join. I do believe it's like 49 bucks for the year. And after just an order or two, the amount of money you're going to save will pretty much pay for the price of the membership and the rest of the year is all savings. If you guys remember, over the holidays, I mean, Biospawn was going for $2.45 a pack. I mean, if you're a fan of Biospawn or, you know, any of the other brands that they carry over there, you get up to 30% off on most things on the site. You get discounts on rods and reels as well. Some will be like a direct discount you'll get as you purchase it. Others will be like a credit added to your account. So guys, if you want to save some money, head over to Carl's and I will link it down below. But today we're talking about the most versatile rod I feel in bass fishing. Now, it may not be the best rod of choice for everyone, depending, you know, where you're fishing. If you're fishing like, you know, thick mats all the time, or you're around huge fish and you like, you know, heavy gauge wire hooks, this will not be the rod for you. But I'd imagine every fisherman has this particular power in action in their arsenal. For me, it's the most versatile rod that I own. Now, not this particular rod, we're talking power and action, but we will get into this particular rod right now, okay? Now, before you guys start going at me in the comments, all right, this is a Guggen series. I think it's the Gold Series rod. Some of you guys are asking for a review on this rod, so that's what we're going to do next year. It is a seven foot, medium heavy fast. That is the power and action that we are talking about. Now, I know some of you guys are fans of the Guggen, some of you are not. Some of you guys are fans of the Guggen products, some of you are not. Okay, we're not talking about the Guggens, we're talking about the Guggen products. Okay, I think that's where the confusion always lies. Some guys want to come hate on the videos because they think we're, think I'm a Guggen or whatever the case may be. We're just talking Guggen products. I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinions of the rod. We're just going to give it kind of just a once over today, look at the guides, the epoxy, the finish, the overall build of the rod. And we'll play around with it next year. Right now it's, I mean, it's snowing outside. Obviously I'm not fishing today. But we're going to go over, like I said, you know, the basics of the rod. And then we're gonna talk about really what I would use a medium heavy fast action rod for. We're going to go over the specs of the rod. I'll let you guys know what that means. And we'll just go from there. All right, there we go. The rod was in a plastic bag that stayed in the tube. So it was protected during shipping. Give me a second, guys. I was going to just take it in, first look. I did not peek at the rod beforehand. This is my first look at the rod. So you notice right off the bat, it's a light rod. I'm going to cut this tag off here real fast, though. That is a very comfortable rod in hand. Very, very, very light. It's definitely what you notice right from the jump. Now let's check out the build quality. I do believe this rod retails around 150. Let's check out the guide. That's one thing you notice right away is the guide work as far as the epoxy and all that goes. And these are very, very clean looking. Okay. Nice epoxy work, if you guys can see that. It's something that I look for in a rod. I mean, I've had rods that are, you know, cost two and three times as much, and the epoxy is not near as nice. May not be a big deal to some, but that is something that I look for. Epoxy is nice and clean on all of the guides. All right. Are they straight? I mean, guides are straight as an arrow. Again, I've had rides that cost twice as much and the guides are not in line. Now, the next ride I get from them, they might all be crooked, but this particular rod, they are straight as an arrow. Okay, this one here is the seven foot, medium heavy fast. 
okay? Which is the go-to, they call it the go-to rod. And there's a few other, I guess, rods in the series. There's a reaction rod, a twitch rod, a muscle rod, and a finesse rod. So, and very, very comfortable in hand, that is for sure. Let's see what we got here. Pull this plastic off. That's nice, clicking. Okay. Real seat will be no exposed thread. That's nice. I love the cork design. I got to say that that cork, the way they have that shaped, that's very comfortable. I like that. Fits in the hand really well. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of the, of the shape of the cork there. Little Guggen Squad emblem there on the end. It says Guggen Squad here. There's their symbol there. You can see that all kind of green and gold flake. I mean, I may still stick with the same um, reel that I was going to, but I do believe another reel would look killer on here. I'll let you guys leave some comments down below if you know which one I'm thinking. But, uh, man, that is a nice feeling rod in hand, I gotta say. I'm digging that, man, that's, that's nice. And like I said, that's what we're talking about right now as far as the build quality, the looks, the feel of the rod. As of right now, I'm digging the rod. And I'll let you guys know how it performs you know, in, uh, in 21, obviously we're not fishing today. It's out there snowing right now. So, uh, no fishing, obviously the rest of the year. I mean, <laughs> the year's over with in a couple days, but, uh, next year we will put this rod to the test, but, uh, I'm digging it, man. Let's see on this paper here. Is there anything about what the rod is made of here? Let's see, seven foot, medium, heavy, fast, recommended for spinner baits, jigs, bladed jigs, Texas rigs. Okay, let's see here. The Gold Series, they got Sea Guides, top of the line ceramic insert guides for smooth handling, composite 30, 40 ton carbon blank for maximum sensitivity and minimal weight, pure cork grip for long lasting durability and premium feel, custom design, click to lock reel seat. And of course it is a casting rod, medium heavy, fast. Okay, line weight. Which I don't believe is on the rod. I think it would have been nice to have that on the rod, labeled on the rod. It is labeled here on the little instruction sheet or whatever. But uh, it would have been nice to have that on the rod. But line weight is 12 to 17 pound test. And then braid is, that was mono and fluoro. Braid is 30 to 50. Handle length is 15 inches. And then again, it's got lures, spinner baits, jigs, bladed jigs, Texas rigs. Does not have lure weight on the rod. That's something that needs to be on a rod. So I'm not a fan of that right off the bat. I'll tell you guys right off the bat, not a fan of that. Let me get another rod and we'll kind of get into that. All right, we grabbed a Dobbins Savvy. I don't believe the Savvy is even being made anymore. I do believe this model is discontinued, but Carl's does carry Dobbins rods as well. Okay, but here's what I'm talking about on this on this uh, Dobbins rod here, you'll see it has the, you guys can see that? It's got on there what the rod would be good for, but it also has the weight rating. That's very important. I'm really surprised that that's not on the rod. Let me double check it one more time just to make sure I'm not down on the rod for that reason and it's on here and I just don't see it. Medium, heavy, fast. Yeah, I don't see it on the rod. And then we check the sheet one more time. Lures, handle length, line weight, line weight, action power type. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not on here. Okay. Well, it's a great time to talk about this because some of you guys may not know what that means. Okay, so we're gonna grab the savvy here just to, again to show you guys. Okay, the lure rating on this rod is quarter to three quarter, okay? Quarter to three quarter. And that, that's a great rating for me with a medium heavy. I've had other medium heavies that are quarter to one ounce, and to me, they feel more like a heavy power rod. So I like a medium heavy that has a quarter to three quarter ounce weight rating. Now at the minimum, quarter, okay? An easy way to explain this. If you put an eighth on this rod, that's not enough weight to load that rod on the back cast. So most likely, when you come forward, that rod didn't even load. 
So if you have that spool pretty loose and you're expecting that rod to load up and launch that bait out, with not using a minimum of a quarter, it's not enough weight to load the tip, so your lure is just going to probably nosedive right in front of you. Your reel's gonna blow up, that's a huge backlash. So you at least need to meet the minimum weight rating. Now, if you're using a certain rod, like a specific type of rod, the right pound test for whatever lure weight you're using, you can get away with using a lighter lure than what it's recommended, but you need to be more experienced to do that. So if it's quarter, if you're a beginner, I would definitely stick with a quarter. Don't go below quarter, okay? Now three quarter, three quarter is the max rating. Now I believe every rod's got a sweet spot. For the most part, for me, medium heavy, three eighths to a half is like the sweet spot. I normally don't go over a half on a medium heavy. But again, this rod, well, again, I don't know on this particular rod, but most medium heavies will handle a three quarter. Okay, so easy way to explain that. If you put an ounce on there and you come back there, load the rod up, come forward, when that rod goes to unload, okay, or even on the back pass, depending on how far or how hard you come back on it, with that much weight, you could snap off the tip. Okay, now you're probably saying, well, heck, well, heck <laughs> we boat flip two, three, four pounders. Well, that's kind of different because you're I guess I would compare boat flipping to like lob casting because you can probably put an ounce and a half on this rod and lob it out because you're not really loading the tip up. And it's kind of the same with boat flipping. You're kind of bringing the fish to the side of the boat and you're just kind of using the weight and kind of just bringing it up. You're not really like flipping it up, you know what I'm saying? Where if you do that, again, you could break off the tip. So max rating, if it's three quarter, if it's an ounce, whatever, you're better off not going over that because again, you could snap off that tip on the back cast, you know, whether it's on the back or coming forward with it, you could snap off that tip if you're using too much weight. But again, every, every rod from a medium, medium, heavy, heavy, they all have that sweet spot where they handle a certain weight really well. And for me, a medium heavy, it's three eighths to a half. Again, I normally don't go over half on a medium heavy. The line rating, okay, let's go over that real fast. What did it say on this rod? You can just go ahead and use this for the, again, guys, if you go to remake these rods again, I would definitely put these specs on the rods but uh let's see here line rating we'll just go with the model fluoro 12 to 17 pound test so a quick example let's say you put on there 25 pound test okay so that's heavier than the the line rating on the rod so let's say you're pitching and flipping with it and you you flip into some brush okay you think you got a bite and you got your drag locked and you go to set the hook and what you thought was a fish is a stump. Well, that stump ain't gonna, it's not gonna give any. And if you're using like a flipping hook, that's not going to give any, it's not going to give either, right? So a stump's not gonna give, the hook's not gonna give. 25 pound test is rated higher than what the rod can handle. So what's gonna give? <laughs> the rod's gonna give. So if you're using, let's say, 12 or 15 pound test, same situation, that line could or should break before the rod does. Okay, that's kind of what the max line rating means. So again, if you go over the rating, which most time we do, it just depends though, how you have your drag set, what other equipment you're using, your line, the hook, and really what you're hooked into. You know, if it's a fish, well, the fish is going to move somewhat. So there'll be some give there. If you're using, you know, mono, the line is going to give. But if you're using a fluorocarbon that's got less stretch or a braid that has no stretch, you hook a stump with a big flipping hook, and again, you're over the rating, you done broke your rod. That's what's going to happen there. And as far as the minimum goes, you know, minimum on this rod is 12 pound test. So it's a fairly stiffer tip to it. So let's say you put on eight pound test and you have your drag, you know, not super loose or you don't have that good of drag in your, in your reel, there's a good chance that uh, you're gonna snap your line. So again, just keep that in mind. That is what the, the lure rating and the line rating means. Now, as far as what I would put on this rod, and I do have other videos on this, which if I can find them, I will link them down below. But I kind of like use it as a system. You know, if, if, and I'm talking fast action rods, medium, medium heavy, and heavy. All fast action, okay? Because when we have a slower action, or like a more of a moderate, moderate fast, I use those for more moving baits or more specific type, type baits and techniques. 
But if you're talking medium, medium heavy, and heavy, all fast action, okay? Here's kind of how I do it. Again, I know really the kind of the sweet spot on a medium heavy, a medium, and a heavy. And that's really what determines which rod I'm gonna grab. Medium heavy fast, I'm gonna throw spinner baits, uh, chatter baits, Texas rigs, jigs, Cinco's, flukes, uh, buzz baits. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, there's really not too much that I would not throw on a medium heavy fast. So if I'm just fishing the normal lakes you guys see me fish or I'm at the ponds, for the most part, a medium heavy fast is gonna do the job, okay? If I'm gonna try and throw something really light, all the same baits and styles and techniques that I mentioned, I might drop down to the medium. If I'm going to go heavier in weight, or if I'm around thicker cover, lily pads, you guys see out there at those ponds, I'm around lily pads. Um, if I know I'm gonna possibly catch a bigger fish, maybe it's during the spawn, I'm fishing around the pads, I know there's big fish in here, or if I'm using a big stout flipping hook, 50 pound braid, in that situation, I'm going to go to a heavy. Again, I can go with the same techniques and baits that I mentioned before. I'm just going to up the power of rod to be able to handle the heavier weight or again, the cover that we're fishing around. Or again, like I said, big bass, which we know doesn't happen too often. And again, same with the low end. If I'm open water fishing, I'm trying to throw a little shaky head or whatever, you know, something lighter, then I'll step down to the medium. Still fast action, okay? And this can, I mean, this is, can be a real like in-depth video. I'm gonna try and make it not that in-depth, you know what I'm saying? Just because there's so many different situations where I'd wanna use a moderate rod or a moderate fast rod or whatever. But I'm gonna say more for the beginner, a fast action rod, a medium heavy fast. It's a great, I mean, it's a, it's a rod that all, all of us should have. All professionals have it. Um, guys just getting into bass fishing, this is, a, this is a rod that you should have, a medium heavy fast. Okay, then a medium fast, and then like I said, a heavy fast action. Those rods can do many, many different techniques, toss many different baits. The only bait that I really wouldn't throw with those rods is crankbaits or something with treble hooks, top waters, whatever the case may be. Now you can kind of get away with doing that with a medium because the rod itself, the power, it's softer and then it's going to lead into, again, more of a softer tip. I mean, you know, it's still a fast action. By the time it gets to the power of the rod, there's more of the rod bowing. So again, it's, it's just a softer rod being a medium power. So you can get away with throwing treble hook baits with a medium power. I personally don't like to do that with a medium heavy or heavy, especially if it's a fast action. Now, if it's a moderate or moderate fast action, of course, I would throw crankbaits with that action. But medium heavy fast, I would mainly stick to single hook baits, and then I would drop down to the medium fast action if I did want to throw treble hook baits. And then, of course, you guys, you guys know the spiel. I don't want to keep repeating myself. But if you're only going to mess with fast action rods, medium, medium heavy, heavy, that's kind of when I would choose one over the other. The medium heavy fast being my go-to, the one I'm going to grab majority of the time. And then again, when I need to step down to lighter baits or maybe treble hook type baits, if I only have a few rods, that's when I would step down to the medium and then up to the heavy when I'm talking heavier weights, thicker cover, you know, bigger fish, things like that. As far as the reel that I was going to mount on this, on this rod, I was going to put the new A2 on there from 13 Fishing. Okay. I was messing around with the new Z2. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. Definitely check it out. I'll put this on here real fast. I mean, it's gonna look good, no doubt. But with that grain in here, I'm almost thinking a Corrado. But that looks pretty, pretty dang good too. And it feels really nice in hand and I'm definitely I'm definitely digging that so there it is there with the new a2 which can be picked up at Carl's as well and as far as gear ratio goes you guys know for the most part I am a six speed kind of guy I love the power of a six speed reel again I feel it's a reel that you can pretty much do anything with 
You have a ton of power. And like I said, I can always speed it up. I can slow it down. It's right there in the middle. For me, a six-speed reel is the most versatile. So again, I, I love a six-speed reel. I love the power of a six-speed. This particular one here is a six, six, eight. So again, right there in the middle, not too slow, not too fast. I'll crank with it, Texas rigs, jigs, top water. I mean, I'll pretty much do everything with a six-speed reel. But yeah, it looks pretty killer for sure with the A2 on there, but I'm thinking that Corrado, Corrado K, might look even better because it's got that green on there. Who knows, maybe even the DC. I'll have to mess around with it. This is the first one that came to mind. It does look pretty killer. And like I said, the comp, the uh, the concept reels, they're, they're very compact, small in size, very comfortable in hand. And like I said, if this is a rod that you can do a lot of things with, you want a nice comfortable combo. And like I said, th these reels really make for a nice, uh, comfortable combo. So I'm definitely digging uh, that for sure. Now, as far as line goes, I mean, you may want to put mono, like if you don't have a couple combos, you may want to put mono on one of your combos just because you can do a lot of different things with mono. I mean, years ago, all there was was mono. I used to frog fish with 20 pound mono. So, I mean, mono is a very versatile line and like I said, it floats. So if you do want to throw top water, you know, you can throw top water with mono. But, uh, for me, I'm probably gonna put on here probably 15 pound uh, Seaguar and Viz X and use it for spinner baits, chatter baits, definitely Texas rigs, jigs. It'll just be good, you know, go-to type rod for single hook type baits. I'll, I'll use it for moving baits. I'll use it for bottom contact type baits as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to fishing with a guy that is very, very comfortable in hand. That is for sure. So guys, hopefully the video wasn't too long. Hopefully you guys Learn something. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys would like to check out the Guggen Squad rods, uh, the 13 reels, Dobbins rods, whatever, that's over there at Carl's. Got to link it down below. Definitely check it out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, guys. If you could do me a favor, man, smash that thumbs up. Leave some comments down below. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you guys on the next one.